I can guarantee that you have time to fit this quick and dirty English study session into your busy schedule. It's so fast, you have no excuse not to do it. In only 15 minutes, we are going to cover speaking, listening, reading, writing, vocabulary, and grammar. So buckle up and let's dive right in. In today's lesson, we'll start out by listening and reading a paragraph about being busy. Then we'll learn about the vocabulary and idioms about being busy. After that, we'll read the paragraph out loud together to practice your speaking and pronunciation. And finally, we'll apply that new vocabulary into a writing assignment where we'll practice using past tense grammar. For today's lesson, you don't really need any materials, though you can definitely optimize your learning experience by using your 5x5 five five vocabulary study guide and your weekly planner at the end of today's study session. And of course, subscribing to Cami's English Corner will give you access to even more study session videos just like this and awesome educational English resources to help you along your English learning journey. Without further ado, let's get started. Time to read and listen. These days, I find myself completely swamped with work, up to my neck in deadlines and responsibilities. I always have my hands full, juggling tasks and projects all day long, from managing multiple assignments to tackling unexpected challenges, I definitely have a lot on my plate. In fact, I often feel like I might be in over my head. Yet, amidst the chaos, there's a sense of fulfillment. Being slammed and up to my ears and responsibilities may be overwhelming but it also shows that I'm capable of pushing myself and accomplishing more than I thought possible. I can definitely relate to that. I feel like I'm always busy, but then I'm quite proud of myself after I accomplish those tasks. Except for washing the dishes and folding laundry. I never feel a sense of accomplishment after completing those tasks. Now, let's take a closer look at that vocabulary related to being busy. Because these idioms all mean basically the same thing, being busy, we're going to separate them into two groups based on how similar those idioms are. Then, we'll look at the nuanced differences between those idioms to see how they are slightly different. This is very similar to the day five exercise in the five by five vocabulary study guide. So let's look at our first group of idioms. Up to my neck, up to my ears, and in over my head. These idioms all imply that you're fully immersed or involved in something, like you're very busy with it. Now, up to my neck and up to my ears really mean the same thing. So you could say, I'm up to my neck in paperwork, or I'm up to my ears in paperwork. They mean the same thing. I guess if you want to imply even more involvement, you could say up to my ears, but I know for me, my neck isn't very long, so neck and ears are in basically the same position. It's not different enough for me to really care. However, the idiom in over my head 
implies that you're fully involved in something, but that you don't have the necessary skills or resources to adequately or correctly complete the task. Now, this might mean that you actually don't have the knowledge or resources to do something. So you could say, I really feel like I'm in over my head. I just don't know how I can finish this project. But we can also use this idiom when we have imposter syndrome, which is when you feel like you aren't good enough or smart enough to complete a task or do something, but everybody else is confident in you. And you probably do actually have those skills. Do you feel like you ever have imposter syndrome? Now, our second group of idioms simply imply being very busy. So we have slammed, swamped, to have one's hands full, to have a lot on your plate, and juggling. So let's take a closer look at all of these very similar idioms. First, we'll compare slammed and swamped. Slammed is when you suddenly have a lot of tasks to do. So maybe you had a few weeks where mm, your schedule was pretty easy and suddenly on Monday morning, <gasps> you have so much to do all at the same time. So you could say, I'm always slammed at work after I take a vacation. On the other hand, Swamped just means that you have a high volume of tasks or a lot to do. So you could say that on Mondays, you're always swamped with meetings, meaning you have a lot of meetings on Mondays. Now let's compare to have your hands full and to have a lot on your plate. These are also quite similar. So to have your hands full simply means that you have a lot of different responsibilities at the same time. Now with swamped, that could mean having a lot of projects or tasks. Maybe they're all the same kind of project or task, maybe not, it doesn't matter. But to have your hands full implies that you have many different kinds of tasks and especially responsibilities all at the same time. So you could say, I really have my hands full these days because I take care of my children and work a full-time job. Honestly, I don't know how people can do that. That's just a lot to have on your plate. I work for myself and only have dogs, and I already feel like I'm in over my head. Speaking of having a lot on your plate, this is very similar to having your hands full, but it can also be used to describe personal or emotional situations, not just work. So an example of this could be, I have a lot on my plate because I'm stressed about losing my job. I don't know if we'll be able to pay rent next month and I'm worried about my dog's health. So all of those are personal and emotional situations. But you could also relate this to work when discussing all of your responsibilities. In general, when you say that you have a lot on your plate, that implies that you're feeling stressed. So it's kind of like a combination of to have your hands full and in over my head. So you put those together and you have a lot on your plate. And our last vocabulary word to describe being busy is the word juggling. Now, usually when we think of juggling, we picture this activity, but we can also use this when discussing being busy. 
So juggling isn't necessarily negative or positive. It just means that you are doing multiple things at the same time. You have work and school and social life and you are dealing with them all at once. In fact, I was inspired to create this English study session series because of my students that have to juggle their busy work life and family and kids and school and studying. So these shorter English study sessions are the perfect way to fit English studying into your busy schedule. Now, if there were any other vocabulary words in that paragraph that you didn't know, make sure to write them down and you can add them to your 5x5 five five vocabulary study guide so that you can practice them next week. Awesome! Now let's get in today's quick speaking practice. We're going to do our speaking practice a little bit differently today. Here's what we'll do. I am going to read one sentence at a time. And after each sentence, this page will pop up on the screen. When you see this page, I want you to pause the video and repeat the sentence and try to mirror my pronunciation. Then when you're done, push play again and we'll move on to the next sentence. With this method, you'll be able to take as much time as you need to carefully pronounce each sentence. Let's get started. These days, I find myself completely swamped with work up to my neck in deadlines and responsibilities. I always have my hands full, juggling tasks and projects all day long. From managing multiple assignments to tackling unexpected challenges, I definitely have a lot on my plate. In fact, I often feel like I might be in over my head. Yet amidst the chaos, there's a sense of fulfillment. Being slammed and up to my ears in responsibilities may be overwhelming, but it also shows that I'm capable of pushing myself and accomplishing more than I thought possible. Great job! Now it's time for the final writing assignment. In the comment section, I want you to write about a time that you were really busy. In your story, try to include at least two of the idioms that we practiced today and try to make it at least three sentences long. Also, don't forget that personal stories, also known as anecdotes, need to be written using past tense because they happened in the past. And as with all of my comment section writing assignments, I'll be providing free writing corrections to all of you that write down your responses in the comments below. You can also submit your writing to be reviewed on an episode of Cami Critiques. Here's the submission information but I'll also include it in the description box. I look forward to reading it soon. And after you finish your writing task, don't forget to mark down all your hard work today in your free weekly study planner so that you can track your progress along your English learning journey. And if you're interested in private one-on-one -on -one English lessons, check out camiesenglishcorner.com. You can schedule a lesson with me to improve your daily conversation and pronunciation, 
prepare for the TOEFL English exam, or get some help with writing corrections. So I know that you're busy, but if you do have a bit more time to study, definitely check out these videos over here that I think you'll enjoy. So good luck with your swamped schedule. I hope you don't feel like you have too much on your plate these days, and I will see you later. Did you notice that I've got my Harry Potter style glasses to go with my Hogwarts Harry Potter sweatshirt. I was going to wear my regular blue light computer glasses, but someone said that I looked like Jeffrey Dahmer in a previous video where I wore these and uh, that was pretty rude. Think twice about what you comment in people's videos because it's not nice to say those kinds of things.